kind of making the rounds here, looking around for fruit, and uh, plenty of it. I'm just reluctant to pick these mangoes before they're really sort of tree ripened, but we have been doing a bunch of experiments to pick them green and see how they ripen up, and many of the varieties do pretty well. Come to pretty good sugar content. I also wanted to talk a little more about the zones because I kind of flubbed that the other day. Just talked about the zone one area. Um, it's pretty simple by way of that whole principle of just putting things that are going to be used harvested most frequently as close as you can to your zero zone, your home, or it might be a farm stand that you accumulate your produce on or sort it out or weigh it up for market or any of those things. But just to have that in fairly close proximity, and that all depends, of course, on the size of the piece of land. Oh, that was a mistake. That's what happens sometimes when these mangoes, these are these big mangoes, these kits. Sometimes when they cluster on a branch and you try to sneak one of them off. A couple of them come along for the red. That's okay. This is really one of those varieties that proves to be very resilient when it comes to sweetening up. This one's even soft. A couple of them on the ground. That's always a good sign because that means they pretty much got to a uh, tree ripened stage. Here's a small lesson in orchard culture. This little uh, discoloration here right here in these little kind of tiny thrip looking things. Those are a couple of things we're dealing with. Um, these thrip looking things have just shown up, well, maybe the last two or three years. And as you can see, when you rub them away, they don't do a lot of damage. They just kind of discolor a little bit. Um, this, however, in combination with the thrip stuff, this is caused by a, an Asian fruit piercing moth. That's a kind of bulky moth with a big, a big thorax that uh, has about a four inch wingspan. And uh, kind of bright orange markings underneath the wings. And they're nocturnal. So, if you want to kind of get to them while they're trying to do damage, you got to pull yourself away from social media, put on your headlamp, dial in the red light, and go out there and see what they're doing. <laughs> this is not, uh, not the activity of choice, necessarily. This is really a nice thing to find. See, this is like, I checked this tree yesterday, and I picked a bunch of fruit, and this one is just on the ground by itself this morning and that means pretty much perfect you can remove the organza bag and pull out this wonderfully see it's a little bit soft to the touch it's just absolutely perfect here again that's the uh, fruit piercing moth these are water spots that get populated by various bacteria and fungal critters. And at its worst, we get the anthracnose, which is ugly. Kind of ruins the fruit. So yeah, it's all kinds of stuff. These organza bags work well for the birds, not so much for the bugs. So. This area in here would be typically thought of as the zone two area, because you got the house back here 
And I did show, I think, that garden in front of the house, which is uh, easily be the zone one garden. There are, by the way, is really good uh, methods for just using one's deck space for pretty much all the household would need as far as greens and such. And that's pretty easy to do. But wandering back here, and I'm not really much more than about 60, 80 feet from the house, maybe 100. And you have an abundance of stuff. There's a lemon tree right there for your lemonade. This is a little white sapote tree that is producing a little fruit and flowering. These are the flowers right here. You can see that. My camera work is probably not up to where it may be in the weeks to come. So this uh, <clears throat> Raposa mango here has always been a little bit of a problem child and uh, has also been the favorite of the birds that uh, really like them. So they take them down. We don't have the upper upper part of the tree bagged up for the fruit because lazy and uh, they're also really getting pretty infested with those rippy looking creatures. I'm gonna nudge down. You know, if these things just kind of, with a light touch, a little, little poke, come off the tree, they're probably gonna ripen up all right. It's also nice when you have a little bit of color coming on the shoulder of the fruit. Because that portends some ripening. Grab a couple of these. Let's see what we got up here. Yeah, not too much. Not too much. Shady growth here. Got this row of olive trees. You can see the nice structure to these trees. They have to be pruned again. We've pruned them twice already. You can see on this one olive tree right in front of us here that we're trying to get them into a shape of a, a kind of martini glass, you know? That's what they look like when they're. Uh, pictures that I've seen of old stand olives that have a huge trunk but they aren't very tall and they have a kind of spreading conformation like that so next step for this tree would be to trim out that middle branch and leave these three uh, ancillary branches to just kind of make that shape and then just prune it back let it grow out more. And uh, then you got something that's gonna be really pretty easy to harvest over the years. And I think that you just keep on pruning it back like that. And uh, that's the way they culture the uh, olive trees around the world. People that know what they're doing. So now we'd be getting kind of deeper into the zone two area. And that means like things like the olives, which are only gonna be generally speaking, harvested one, one time during the year over a period of a few weeks because they don't ripen right away. Uh, but you're not gonna be out here all that often. So things like the mangoes and the lemons and such, you wanna kind of have those as close as you can to the house because those are usable with regularity. This is one of my favorite areas on the property. Really quiet little valley. So this is a dual purpose <laughs> outdoor shower and also how are we gonna water the guava tree? 
and that's how we do it. Turn it on and walk away. And hope we remember that we turned it on and come back and shut it off. You know, the biggest, biggest mistake you can make in that way is that you leave the water on overnight or something until you see it again. It's no good deal. These guys, right now it's getting kind of dry here. So, I mean, it always is. We have only about an average of 18 to 20 inches of rain a year. So no problem leaving something on overnight, spacing out on it. Just checking this mango tree here in back of what we call Casa Mango. And I see here that the birds are starting to get to this fruit. That's a very green fruit. I'm going to take this one off to show. See, this is this is a rock hard mango and there's something already getting to it and by the pattern of the clawing it may just be a rat and that's what happens sometimes the rats will find a tree like this and they'll go yippee you can wake up and eat and that's what they do and then the birds come too because they see the color they go for it but there was a nice one on the ground, so that's kind of cool. I'll take one, you take one. I'll be fat and happy. Okay. There's Castle Mango. <laughs> okay. This is a Ruby Supreme Guava, and uh, no fruit on it now, but the more water we give it, the more it'll tend to go into flower, so I'm gonna do that. Delicious fruit. About 10 in the morning now, and it's getting kind of warm. It was nice and chilly last night. So, in a sense, you could you can think of this whole area here also as a separate little ecosystem in the sense of applying the zone system to this, right? So, for anybody that might be living in there or staying in there as a worker and hanging out down here, there's no reason why a small zone one garden couldn't be put in. Uh, in proximity to the house. So all you have to do is roll out of bed and get out and go down those steps and pick some greens or pull some turnips or whatever. And then uh, the rest of it kind of segues into the lower orchard anyway. So you're dealing with the same zone two configuration. It's kind of overlapping. And that's nice overlapping okay and the king mangoes here this tree hasn't been too badly damaged the fruit hasn't been too badly damaged because we got these bagged pretty early on in the bagging frenzy isn't that a beautiful my god <laughs> I was weighing some up this morning for market I had a couple of these that were three pounds The store that I sell to marks them up about the Keystone. And uh, so they sell them for six bucks a pound. I was thinking that's an 18, 18 dollar mango. Kind of crazy. But then money is becoming less and less valuable. And that's all there is to it. So, people do seem to be okay with buying this. Well, they come out here to the farm, they pay three bucks, so 
That's a bit better. So this is uh, a Golden Glow Mango. What a nice name. And it was a hybrid that was done by a guy named Dr. Yi down in Kihei. And uh, I forget the, uh, the varieties that were cross-pollinated, but it, it turned out to be a really, really good mango. Um, you can see from these, these panicles that it's setting some fruit. I think I pointed out some of the tiny, tiny fruit the other day and how little it's actually going to take to have that thing look pretty full of fruit. I mean, it really is flowering nicely now. Beautiful. There's a cousin down below there, too. You can, you can see it. It's, the top of that tree is flowering pretty nicely. It was kind of a mistake on my part. I put it down there in the little valley and uh, right by those olive trees so it doesn't get a lot of sun and mangoes do a lot of sun yes they do okay check on the Raposa here this is all still zone 2 stuff this property really uh, where it drops off in the front of the house kind of forms the lower half of the property and I always think of it that way, the lower and the upper portion, um, because there's a fair amount of grade to the property and slope, so pretty easy to distinguish that. So really, for all intents and purposes, uh, for the lower portion, there's a zone 1 and a zone 2, and for the upper portion, there's a zone 1 and a zone 2, and the zone 3 area, if they're if that was to be designated, it's pretty much just left in land, like in front of the house. For example, it's not being used much now and would not be put in things that were harvested very frequently. Or back out towards the driveway up the hill there and back of the property where there's nothing going on. Uh, that would be a zone three designation. And on a piece of land, this this size, that would just mean, hey, you know, stay out of there. Don't make any mess. Don't bring anything invasive. And if it's hillside that might tend toward erosion patterns, well, you can do some earthworking to divert that or make the water work for you in certain ways. I'm just going inside of this mango tree to see if there's any fruit in here that showing signs of ripeness. These fruits that are inside the tree uh, can stay quite green without the effect of the sun on them, but they do begin to lighten up in the green color and also get a little bit of yellow. But the ones inside the tree don't very often get that red blush. And this is beautiful mango, but it's still hard. I don't want, want to take it. So it softens a little to the touch. Let's see what these guys are doing. It'd be nice to find one that's perfectly ready to pick. see that one is ripe on the tree but it's also been bombarded by the fruit piercing moth uh, not a lot we can do about that unless we want to miss a Netflix movie for a Thursday night football we don't want to do that <clears throat> we put up with so much suffering in life I'm being facetious. <laughs> okay, so usually when I get a bucket full, I go back to the staging area and then maybe get another bucket because there's more out here. So that's pretty much what I'll be doing. 
for the next little while. I spent some time this morning cleaning up mangoes that were really too damaged to take to the market because uh, we make a kind of puree out of it and freeze it up and then pipe it out into trays that go into the freeze dryer and make nice little freeze up mango treats. So one of the many value added products that you're compelled to make because you don't want to give all your slightly bad mangoes to your chickens. You have good chicken karma as it is just to be here on Maui, so do not need to spoil them. Okay. That pretty much describes the way my morning goes. It's mostly gathering fruit and observing things. I've been watching this Atamoya tree here because the fruit set is not terribly good this year, but these are wonderful fruits and you can uh, you can see their progress by just coming around and checking them out. They can get anywhere from as big as your head to uh, you know fairly small ones. Wrapping up like that. Check down in here for some. See if there's some little koi. will be coming available soon. Well, that's uh, kind of shows you my job description. And uh, it's one I like a lot. I've been thinking about getting saffron. I see all that golden pollen on these spider lilies. Saffron's a good crop. Go to the restaurants, high-end restaurants. They will love you. Okay, I'm gonna take this fruit up to the farm stand and do some sorting and processing. We'll catch you guys later.